we can do this. This is our final try. Um, today, I am talking to Susanna Quintana about her book, You're Still That Girl. And we have had technical difficulties, but now we are here and back, and I think we can do this. Um, and Susanna's gonna get on in just a sec. Here she is. And it's gonna work. Here she is! Yay! 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 <laughs> okay, good. Yay! All right, let me just prop this up. Yeah, yeah I was yeah. trying to figure that out on my computer, and it was not working. I know, I know. I was like, what is it? Oh, and there's, is a, lot it? Oh, and there's a lot of feedback. It, do you have your computer? It, do you have your computer still on? I have it open, yeah, but I don't have Facebook open. Oh. No. But let me quit. Um, Giving me a yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, still echoing. Still echoing me. Oh. Everything that. Everything that. Echoing back. Echoing back. Is, it? is that better? Let's see. Let's see. Now I just have my phone. It's still echoing it's me. It's still back. echoing me back. Is, oh. Is your microphone? We are having quite the technical difficulty today. today. This whole. This whole. Our whole plan. Our whole plan is all. Plans, all Nora. Nora. Uh, uh, Nora uh, Elizabeth, say, Elizabeth. Do you hear the echo? Do you hear the echo? Of my I don't voice. hear it. Of my voice. Yeah. You don't hear it, Susanna. Mm -hmm. I wonder if other. People I wonder if other people hear it. Hear it. Me. Is something under, it's something, your, it's something like under your microphone? Um, no, if I pick up the phone, is that better? Let me see. Oh my god. Let me see. Oh my god. No, I don't, no, know. I don't know. And it doesn't happen, and it doesn't happen when you are on. So I do think it's when you're... Hey, Chrissy, will you just hey, Chrissy, will you tell me if you can hear the echo of my voice? Because Susanna can't hear it. Susanna can't hear it. But I can hear it. Closing my uh, let me see if let me see if it's still try to join me again or I can yeah, just do you want to yeah, get off and join again? Yeah, let me well hold on, how do I get off? Mm. Okay. Now I'm not getting all the echoing back, so I don't know. Maybe Susanna can join again and it'll solve it. Okay. Let's see. Are you echoing? Let me see. Yeah. Can, you put maybe yeah. can you put maybe headphones in? Uh, I can't. Hold on a second. Or maybe I can. Or maybe I can. Let me see if I can. Let me see if I can. Let me see if I can. Okay, we'll figure this sucker out. Okay. Okay. Oh, it solved it just for me. Okay. We are having technical difficulties. Oh my gosh, it's better for me even just doing it this way. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can I can you hear, hear you, but I can't see you now. I know. Oh, okay. I have to hold the phone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've solved all of our I'm technical to... problems. I feel like we deserve like a chocolate cake or I like, know. I don't even know what, of all the things that have conspired to have us not talk I know. today. I feel like, I know. That's yeah, crazy. this has been an incredible journey already. We deserve so many right. rewards. 
Um, right. boring stories of all of the difficulties that have conspired to have us not talk. <laughs> yep. Well, uh, yeah, I think you're a woman like I am and you can't shut me up. So nice. They, whatever know, was like, trying to us shut us up. Yeah. We will accept it. Right. Accept it. <laughs> we will talk. Um, okay. So I want, I, I'm going to introduce myself for your audience. So I'm Meredith Holly. I'm a lawyer and I'm a power dynamics master facilitator and I help women stop sexual harassment without quitting their jobs. And you're, and, and I'm going to say your name, I think, right. But I've heard it said 50,000 different ways, but it's Susanna Quintana, yeah, right. right? Thank Very you. Good. Yeah. And so introduce yeah. yourself for my people. Yes. So I'm Susanna Quintana. I'm a writer and a life coach for women. I help women who want to recover and heal after abusive relationships. I am a, an abuse survivor myself. And so that's my, that purpose just sort of found me. It's not what I had planned in high school to become, but yeah. lo and behold, that's what I'm doing. I don't think any woman's like, I hope I grow up to work on sexual right. harassment and abuse, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> Could be in a, a um, whatever, a, like astronomer or the president of the United States, but instead I'll talk about narcissistic right. abusers. Right, exactly. Well, my dream was to become an Olympic horse jumper. So pretty close. This is this is really close. <laughs> Almost the same. Um, okay, so your new book. So your book launched on um what March 14th March yes March 14th and, yep there it is yeah right there. and so tell us like what inspired like well so my understanding is the purpose of your book is just to get the information out there of you can heal from you can get over a abusive narcissist you don't have to stay yes. stuck Yes. And the reason that I titled it, You're Still That Girl, is because, especially with emotional abuse at the hands of a narcissist, what happens so often to women is that, and what happened in my experience, was that toward the end of the um, relationship and then going into recovery and healing is that you don't even recognize the woman in the mirror anymore. Yeah. Because you've, you've just been so beaten down and virtually the, what the narcissist tries to do is make you disappear. Yeah. Um, so, so the way that I healed and recovered was key in getting in touch with that girl that I used to be, you know, before all the abuse started, before society got its hands on me, before everybody was telling me what to be, what to do, how to think, um, that kind of stuff. So that was the key in, in, in recovery for me is, you know, because that girl's got all the answers. Call it your instinct or intuition or whatever you want. But it's basically that girl who, you know, we're all, we all have that age where we look back and we're like, oh my God, I was so, I was perfect then. I could do anything. I could fly if I wanted to. I think I did try to fly yeah. when I was <laughs> like seven years old or walk into wardrobes in search of Narnia. Yeah. You know, it's like nothing slowed me down. I could beat all the boys in the races and in the bike, you know, rides and stuff like that. And so, um, and then slowly and surely you grow up and you get all these labels slapped on you. And then because of your certain experiences, then you, and we can talk about that more. That's how you, you know, that's how some of us find ourselves in abusive relationships. So, um, so yeah, when I looked in the mirror at the end of it and I'm like, I have no idea who that woman is. Yeah. And it was just, uh, it was just a process of, well, I need to get back in touch with that girl so I can figure out who I, I am. know I had this experience one time that totally resonated with what you said. Um, I, I was at sort of my worst, most depressed moment and I I walked into a friend's house and her little daughter was like two and a half so she could run around but she was still really wee little child and right. she ran around the corner because she heard the door open and she just goes <gasps> and ran away from me and uh, my friend was like I'm so sorry and I was like no I think I would run away from me if I saw how I look right now too <laughs> like how do you find oh. that human part of yourself again when it's been chased away, I think. 
Right. Um, so right. you have a sort of beautiful image that you talk about of that girl, of that like little free spirit. Rem- do you remember how you talk about it in the book? I just remember I really liked it. Um, it's like fire, yeah, well, fireworks she, or something. Yeah. Yeah, she was. I mean, she was just, she was full of it. She was so, fu- she was just like, she was fiery and spunky and honest and awesome yeah. and talented and creative and there there were no bad adjectives right there's there's no bad adjectives to describe any of us yeah. we know, right like we are so perfect we're perfect and we're good and there's we, there's nothing wrong yeah. with us right it's just that we start to believe these things as we as we grow up and then especially in abusive relationships and especially in narcissistic uh and emotionally abusive relationships is because you know, it's not like we're, we can look in the mirror and go, oh, my God, I have a black eye, right? Yeah. I have a bruise. So I have proof that I, I, I'm in like pain. Like I'm real. And I have I proof really that he's hurting being, me. Like real abuse. I really yeah. am being abused. Like I really, yeah, yeah uh, you know, and look, this is my suffering. But, but in emotionally abusive relationships, oftentimes, like in my case, I didn't even know I was a victim until I got out of it. Well, and you also so, talked about a great, I thought a great example of that when you were talking about going to parties and you're going to parties and you are like on the arm of your husband who it, everybody loves and you're saying yeah. everything's so wonderful. Everybody loves Yeah, him. and everything, yes. and you're wearing a fancy dress and you're looking perfect. Yeah. And I think a lot of times we have a misconception that abuse survivors look like uh broken like uh right like like that somehow we're gonna identify them as being um like you were saying almost like with bruises like yeah. that there's something that yeah. stands like, out like like we show up like we're wearing sunglasses yeah. right like yeah, big huge Elton John totally. sunglasses right because we're like oh we like at three o'clock in the I afternoon saw a movie right with that. because totally. <laughs> yeah, right or we wouldn't even make it to the parties right because we're on the couch and with our sunglasses and we can't get up yeah and- Yeah. And, and for, you know, that, that is, that is hardly ever the case. Right. But especially in, that's why emotionally abusive relationships with a narcissist are so tough to recover from is because it takes us to, so, so long just to figure out, oh my God, I think I was. Yeah. Victim, right. And then second, now what the hell do I do? And then third, it's like, there is no help, right? Because you have the majority of people around you, even your own family members, who are very much, you know, in love with the guy who is abusing yeah. you, right? Because they're so fantastic. And, and not only that, but like in my case, I had spent so long standing up for him and, 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 um, and in public being his, uh, you know, biggest that you start to believe, right? Right. So my sister is on here. She's yeah. like a narcissistic personality. We know a bit about that because of our, so your story of your parents is pretty similar to our story of my parents. Yeah. At least. We have yeah. Because moms. you, yeah. Yeah. You start, you start saying, you know, when, when you first start that journey of, especially with, with a narcissist, you know, when you're with a narcissist and you first escape we, uh, and all the women I work with say the same thing. And I did the same thing as we get on this, uh, we get on this road of just, I'm going to research every yeah. flipping thing I can about narcissism and you learn all the language yeah. and, and, you know, you just have these constant aha and moments. And it, it makes, I feel like and there's then, a huge relief about it. Right. Uh, because I think the tricky yeah. thing about being with somebody or influenced by somebody who is that um, compelling of a personality is what you just said of you start to believe it, you start to be the cheerleader. And so then shifting your own brain to see the behavior as problematic is a huge effort. Yes. And it's so hard because you, because another thing about emotional abuse is that 
you spend so long, especially like the last few years in my marriage, I was telling myself that I was the problem or I was believing him when he was telling me that I was the problem. Yeah. I was the crazy one. I was too sensitive. I was too well, depressed. I was, I had all these problems. why you believe him? Because you've just told everybody that he's the I magical him, right? savior of your life. Right. He's the right. man of my dreams. He, yeah, he's, he's so wonderful. Soulmate. And I spent the first, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. So it's, it's terrible when you get to that place. It's really lonely and isolating because, you know, you, I even went to three different therapists and I was re-traumatized mm -hmm. all over again because they were like, they, they were speaking from a perspective of, oh, these two people are equals. just having marital yeah, problems and they're, they're equal, equal right? Their, so mm -hmm. I'm going to, yes. And that was horrible really? because, because I remember one therapist who was, and they were all women and he has a way with women and narcissists have a way with totally. therapists. Oh my God. They're so good at what they do. Yeah. Yes. Don't ever go to therapy with a narcissist. You go separately on your own um, because they will manipulate the hell out of the situation. Well, and I think also but, when um, we've been so trained that our brain is working for the narcissist, there's just two, there's yes. at least two people in the room advocating for the narcissist right. already. <laughs> so, right. Like, Who's right. And because you? you've been, you, you know, you believe so long mm -hmm. that, I mean, for years and years, I had been told these things about myself. And so I, before it didn't take very long before I believed all mm -hmm. these things, right? He wasn't the problem. I yeah. was the problem. I was a bad mother. I couldn't take care of my kids. I couldn't, I was too depressed. Yeah. I was too high maintenance. I mean, yeah. my God, the list could go I even on. see this yeah. happen in workplace situations with bosses who have that magnetic personality component and the close relationship yeah. and it can become an abusive. And I'll have um, women come to me in those workplace and they'll do the exact same thing where they're like unconsciously explaining to me why him uh, punishing them for like withholding a bonus because they didn't have sex with him is their fault. Yes. <laughs> absolutely. And I'm like, literally, absolutely. there is oh no my God. scenario. Like, you you can't explain right. this to me, but it's interesting that you want to. Like, let's look at that. Right. Right. And, and it's not like when you're with a narcissist, it's not like they do this at the beginning. No. In the beginning, they're everything yeah. you want them to be. So then you fall for them, then you trust them, then like me, you get married to them, and then you build a life with them, and then you have children with them, and all of this stuff. Yeah. And then when the shift starts happening, you're like, wait, what? <laughs> What's going on? I'm so confused. And, um, you know, th this myth about, you know, abuse victims are, you know, weak mm -hmm. or, um, you know all these negative things is that's just a myth. I mean, I was, when I met my ex, he, I was a strong, um, I thought, you know, I was really smart. I was really good with money. I was a great mom, um, all of these things. Right. Wow. And then at the end of it, after 16 years, I felt like I was none of those yeah. things. And I believe that about myself because I had just been hearing it yeah. for so long. And it's not like they just come out and tell you, oh, you're a bad mother. It's this, it's this insidious sort of gaslighting, basically, this manipulating that, that they know what they're doing and you don't know what they're doing. So they're just doing. helping you, know, you one out. Of my pieces. They're just helping you understand yes. where you're so Yes. He was often like, he would talk to me like that in like a psychologist yeah. tone. You know what I mean? And he's like, I remember he used to say this all the time to me all the flipping time. Like I would be on the floor after, let's say I had found out about something where he had been really cruel or something. And I'd be just collapsed on the floor in a puddle crying, just pathetic. I was just like in a pathetic mess on the floor. And that's when he would always say something like in his psychiatrist or psychologist tone, he'd be like, you know, Susanna, you, I can't make you happy. You know, that comes from within. You have to make your own self happy. I'm always happy because I'm just a happy person. And I remember being on that pathetic, you know, in that like pile on the floor, and I'm like, all right. You know, I remember just thinking to myself, I'm like, you're right. Yeah. I suck. <laughs> yeah, right. It's so not help. I mean, and it even, I think in a different context, is actually a helpful thing to say, to be like, you are powerful enough to create the environment yes. that you want. And in that 
it's like using something that is helpful in a way that is just yeah perpetuating the abuse situation yes yeah and and narcissists have a way like you said about um the boss treating an employee mm -hmm. like that and turning it around so whenever i would have a problem like you know, like I'd catch him, you know, uh, flirting openly mm -hmm. with, with another woman or whenever I'd call him on something, somehow he'd turn that around to make it seem like I was this jealous, insecure, somehow it was my problem, mm -hmm. right? Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. So you, so when you first met him, you were, like, explain to me, I didn't, I don't know if I totally understood the dance. Like he owned a dance studio. You, you have a lot of dance background. Is that? We started. Yeah. We were both professionals. And we lived in a very small town. So we performed and did shows and we were very well known in the community and, and yeah, dancing, being a dance teacher was a perfect, it was our, like our side job because we also built uh, businesses together in real estate and construction. Mm -hmm. So we were, we were totally immersed in a mm -hmm. business together. But, but as a dance teacher, I mean, you don't get any better for a narcissist. Yeah. I mean, he's like whisking women around the floor all the time. And, you know, it's, I couldn't compete. I remember, toward, especially the last few years when I didn't get out much because I was isolated, not because he was actually telling me I want you to stay home but he would say things to the point where I didn't want to go out right you know like um he would he would get me to not go out to social like a party or something mm -hmm. like that because he'd say you know San you you should stay home I know you don't like these kind of events there's gonna be a lot of people and you know I'm really fun and outgoing and people really like that about me and and I you know again I'm like well he is right you know I'm just I don't really like big, you know, yeah. whatever. I'm like convincing myself, you know? So a lot of the times, especially the last couple of years, I, I rarely went out with him. And when I did, you know, I just sort of stand there or be like in the corner while he sucked up all the energy in the room. And I just have this like fake smile on my face, yeah. you know, just like, so I don't even, yeah. you know. And I think that that, like, a lot of times when I'm working with clients, they will say something like, um, like, well, what if he says this? Like, what if he says that I'm lying? And I'm like, totally. He's totally going to say you're lying. Then the only problem is yeah. if you believe him. He gets to be wrong. Yeah. And then True. if you believe him, it's a disaster. But if he's just wrong... Right. That, but I think when, when you're in that close of a relationship with somebody, you want to share reality with people. And so we like shift our right. own reality to match theirs, I think a lot of times, which is yes. so dangerous. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, because the, the, I was going to say the whole dynamic of an abusive relationship is, of an emotionally abusive relationship in particular, is that the victim is unaware there's something going on. And while the abuser, the narcissist is, he knows well aware, he's very mm -hmm. aware what he's doing and he's doing it with, with intent and purpose. Mm -hmm. While I remember just, and that's why a lot of victims will use the word that you feel like you're in a mm -hmm. fog, you're confused a lot, is because you, here's this person who you fell in love with and you trust and all of that. And when these, when the mask starts to come off and when you start seeing these signs, it's like, you know, then you start doubting so your own. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. So then you go with absolutely. their version because it sounds nicer because their version always sounds yes. nice. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And also because that's what we're trained yeah. to do, especially really? women, is that, okay, we, we, um, and, and this is so hypocritical what society tells us about marriage, for example, where they're like, oh, you know, how, why did you stay so long? And why did you I put up with it? We asked women that. that. Yeah. Right. But, uh, but at the same time, if we, if like I would have mm -hmm. bailed at the first red flag, then everybody would have been mm -hmm. like, why are you quitting? Marriage you is just hard. From, you right. Just go from one relationship to another, you can't ever put in the hard right. work. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Thing, so you really can't right, win. Of like believing other people's version of reality instead of knowing what is safe to you and what you tolerate. But yeah. we're never taught how to do that. Right. We're not, we're not taught how to right. set our own standards of this is behavior that I do tolerate. 
and I work on it. And this is yes. behavior that is 0% times across the line that I do not ever tolerate. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yes. And if we, you know, the, you know, if we, um, you know, the most victims of narcissist and emotional abuse were empaths. Mm -hmm. We're very trusting. We think all people are good yeah. people. Lesson number one, most people are inherently good. Yeah. Not, Not all, all people. people yeah. Right. Not all people. Um, but, um, but also we, we are like in my situation, I grew up with a model of an abusive yeah. father who was emotionally and verbally abusive and of a mother who modeled, um, what is she, what, what, what's a good word? Just submission. And also right? kind of never speaking the way up. That you described it in the book is like, she, she kind of modeled that. I don't know who I am in the mirror kind of presence, right? Like just yes. not having her own soul present with you. Is that fair? Right. Yeah. yeah. It was almost like she was just in, um, she just went into um, that mode of, you know what, I'm not going to think too deeply about this. I'm just going to go into, and, and that I think also that depends on your generation. Yeah. I think that was my, my mother's generation where it's just like you stay married and no matter how bad it gets, you just get up and take care of your kids and do what women, you know, are expected to do. So I grew up with that as a father and then modeled that as a mother who never stuck up for herself and who never fought back and who never talked back. Um, and I was taught through their examples that women were just lucky if we got a seat at the table, yeah. but we weren't. And if we talked, we needed to say nice things, especially in to a men. Voice. How, don't, in a friendly yeah. voice, don't be angry. Yeah. Don't be a bitch. Yeah. You know, don't, uh, don't make a, don't, don't make a boundary. Yeah. Right. Don't make demands or well, whatever even, else. So I think it was mo like the model that we see a lot of times is that it is physically dangerous to to enforce our own boundaries and you'll lose your Absolutely. job, you'll lose your family, you'll lose your relationship. You'll end up exactly. under a bridge somewhere. Right. All yeah, alone. All alone. And it's better to right. experience this sort of like, like a uh, disastrous discomfort that you are experiencing with people than to be all alone under right. the bridge. If you take care of yourself. Yeah. yeah, it's such a yeah. lie. I didn't even have, it was, it was absolutely no wonder that I went right from my father's house. A couple years later, I think I was 20 when I met my first husband, who was also emotionally abusive. Uh, it was just no wonder, you know, that I went right into that. And then when I finished with that marriage, um, I was 29 years old and I wasn't even divorced yet legally when I found my second husband and just I just dove without a parachute into that because I didn't know I was supposed to work on myself. I didn't know anything. I just felt, I just thought, wow, I had the jackpot. I found the man of my dreams. Yeah, and he's you so know. into me. So he, yeah, yeah, totally. And so um, I think that along with the lie that it's like weak women who get abused, there's also this lie of like, if you get abused, then you're just, permanently broken and like there's no recovery yeah. and I really love the message in your book that like you process what you need to process you sit with what you need to sit with it's not a race but you do get to yeah. the other side and so tell like tell people a yes. little bit about what that's been like for you to be I know there was like the whole process of the parenting like I love that you call it parallel parenting not co-parenting I think that's such yes because that's impossible yeah. <laughs> that's impossible with a narcissist yeah, yeah but parallel parenting yes. I think is like I am a parent this is my job yeah yeah basically I'm just a single mom and once in a while even to this day I'm like oh god that's right he's still yeah. there I forgot yeah <laughs> But that's but amazing the, to get to a point where you forget that he's still there. Yeah, absolutely. And it's possible. And I would have never in a million years thought it would have been possible with uh, back then, back when I was in the dark. So this is what I call see, it. Can you see the comments? So Barb just said it feels like the pain will never end. I just found out about another infidelity yeah. today. Barb, you have to get Susanna's book. Um, and I think we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was in the same place. I remember, um, oh my God, 
I, I just actually did a Facebook post about this yesterday where I said, it feels like a million years ago, the moment that I found out about his double life. And yet, and there were, there was all sorts of other stuff going on, but like she just said about yeah. finding out about another infidelity. And yet I, I can remember it like it was yesterday. And I can remember the pain and the hopelessness I was in. I don't feel it anymore, yeah. but I but can, can remember it, it clearly. I can picture it. I remember the, the, it was like, um, you know, the best way to describe it is when I finally got out. And um, even though we, when I finally started on the journey uh, uh, or on, you know, you go through recovery first yeah. before healing, yeah. right? Because you just have to, it's like you're in a car accident, yeah. right? You're like, you have to first recover before you can And heal. your brain is but, resetting but, itself the same way your body Absolutely, because you've been traumatized. Totally. Yeah, yeah, you've been traumatized. But the best way that I can describe it is that feeling of, I felt like I had come out of solitary confinement and felt the sun for the first time. And that it also helped that I, because I was living this life in Wyoming, and I moved back to my home state of Arizona, where the sun yeah. actually was shining. <laughs> literal. Because <laughs> I'm like, oh, God, this was a, like a literal, yeah. you know, banishing of the darkness. Yeah. But, um, but I do remember. I mean, I don't want to. Um, that you know, it's it. There's no um, nothing to make fun of that pain no. at all, because when you're in it. It is just. I think it's the worst experience um, that we can have. It's the worst. Right? It's the absolute yeah. worst, especially if it comes along the lines of where you're, you're, that uncovery of this person, where it's like, wow, your whole life flashes before your eyes. You know, I felt as though, and I talk about this in the book. I compare it a lot to a hurricane. Yeah. Right? Is that. One day I've got my yeah. house and everything in it and my life and da, da 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 and a category five hurricane comes through and the next day I'm standing there and I've lost everything, yeah. right? And I and now I'm supposed to rebuild and I'm like, I, I, what do you mean? I don't. I, what do you mean rebuild? I've been spending. I've been spending this I built invested it. this time to I already ex built right. It. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so your life is stolen from you without yeah. your consent. But then right? I, and I don't know how you feel about this, but I feel like at the same time, a lot of times when you do, and I think you talk about this a little bit in the book, but a lot of times when you do rebuild, you're like, oh, what if that hurricane hadn't happened? And I had just slowly died in that prison of my old house. Yes. Yes. I mean, and like I said, I just talked about this uh, yesterday is that um, the trauma of what I went through and recovery and healing is no, no. easy task. My God, you come out. It, it is, it's the hardest thing. I wouldn't wish no. it on my worst enemy. Yeah. Um, but, but, but you do come out on the other side. Trauma did yeah. change me, but I wouldn't take away that for anything yeah. because the, the woman that I am today, I would never have been that woman had I stayed in yeah. that relationship, right? I would have be, continued to be a shell. I can't even imagine. I, I would be nothing yeah. today if I was, if I was still. And so now I would just, you're like, you're in a, you're not living under a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> right. It all turned out. Turns to where out you could actually create a life you wanted. But you're are you in the middle of a PhD program right now or did you just finish one or tell me a little No, I'm actually getting my second oh, bachelor's degree okay. and yeah, I knew it was so like I graduate post, in um I, I, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was my second bachelor. Is this one my first was in history and this one is in women and gender yeah. studies. So um, yeah. And I graduate in That's December. So yeah. Yeah. So there, there is life despite what my father used to say, when a woman speaks up and takes what she wants in this world, you know, she's not gonna, yeah. you know, melt like in the wizard of yeah. Oz. It's shocking, but it turns out to be true. Right. Yeah. right. Right. Yeah. And actually, you know, once, you know, that's where, that's why I say I wouldn't have changed anything because the woman that I became today, um, now I, you know, I own my life. I'm empowered. I, I hold the pen to writing my life story, yeah. right? Whereas before, um, whether it was first husband, second husband, my father, there was always a man mm -hmm. writing my story for me, right? And I was just, I was just, a, I, w I was just the character, right? And I was really? just doing what whatever was written for me. So it's a great place to be. And so now you are, 
you are taking clients now, right? You are working individually with women, helping them recover from this kind of situation. Yes. And the interesting thing is I work with women all over the world. Like I have a client in Israel. I have one in London. It's, and I've had one before in Australia. It is amazing to me. It still is to this day, but ever since I started speaking and telling my story and every time I get on the phone with a woman who's like, I've been down the same road. You're telling my story. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter where we come from. It doesn't matter what our experiences are when it comes to narcissistic abuse. It's like we're all on the same road. I just happen to be farther down so I can have that perspective and insight, yeah. right? It's, it's no different than like if you were to look at yourself 10 years ago, right? You'd be able to give her great advice, right? right? You'd be able to say, hey, don't pluck your eyebrows <laughs> because you're going to regret that. Idea. It sounds good. <laughs> right. No, don't cut right. Right. You'll so, regret it. Ex yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's the same thing. Yeah. You know, I'm on, I'm on the same road as, as myself was 10 years yeah. ago, right? When I was in all that pain and I was suffering. So, so that's what I do is I just use my perspective and I have the hindsight to help other women avoid all the mistakes that I made because ah. when you're leaving a narcissist and when you're divorcing, God forbid, a narcissist, and then really God forbid, if you share children with a narcissist, that's a whole other hell that you have to enter into. And so I have the, that's why this sort of, you know, this purpose chose me because I just want to save as many women as I can yeah, from going through what I totally. went through. You know, you, you have to go through it. You have to go through the But pain, you don't have to do it the hard but way. There's, you yeah. don't have to do it the really hard way where you make mistakes that you I feel later. like sometimes it's like somebody has been presented with Mount Everest. And you would never wish Mount Everest on somebody. And if they turn right. back, they know that there's like starvation behind them. So you have to encounter Mount Everest. But if you can see yes. that there's somebody who has climbed to the other side, you at least know it's possible, right? Yes. And exactly. then if they can say, yeah, put or this just in at your the backpack. top, right? Yeah, put this in your backpack. Exactly, yeah. right? They're just at the yeah. top and they're like, hey, yeah, it's no different than. You know, um, like what I tell the women um, that I work with is at the very, very beginning when we first start working together is I'm like, okay, you're on a road, right? And I've got the map. So you're not going to get lost, right? You're not going to take over a here. wrong way. Yeah. And yes. It's not under <laughs> exactly. a bridge. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> so what do you say to people who are sort of at the bottom of that mountain or at the beginning of that road and they're kind of like, I don't think that there's an end to this road or I don't think there's a top yeah. to this mountain. How do you? Yeah. Um, well, one of the, one of the main things, and I really spent a lot of time in the book about this is if you're going to get back, if, if you want to fully heal, heal and recover, and what I mean by that is that you come out on the other side where you're emotionally detached from your mm -hmm. past. That means that you don't, you can look back on your past like a scientist, like I can tell any story, any time, anywhere about my past, and I'm not choking up, I'm not affected, emotionally affected by it anymore, right? Whereas before, I could barely get the words out, I'm like... <laughs> You know, because yeah. of all the pain, it's so hard. So that's what I mean by success. Yeah. Um, but but the road to get there, you know, uh, is you have to and and to use that girl within to help you get there because she has a lot of, you know, she has a lot of the answers because when we're in these abusive relationships, we shut her up, right? Because you yeah. can't have both. If you're going to listen to that girl within, she would have told me right at the beginning, honey. No, no, this is a bad idea. Do not listen to him. You know, just like your gut instinct is like screaming, yeah. right? So the only way that I could continue to have the man of my dreams was I had to shut her up, right? So in getting back in touch with her, the way to go through it, and especially at the beginning, the hardest part is you got to get really, really honest with yourself. Yeah. And this is not about blame or shame. This isn't about nobody deserves to be abused. Yeah. But I had to look at those parts of my life where I had to figure out how did I end up here, right? And I had to look at that honestly, which was very painful sometimes because I, admit to, I had to admit to myself that, you know, for example, I had zero self-esteem. I had zero self-worth. I had an abusive father. 
I had a mother who didn't stand up for herself. These are, these are painful realizations. Yeah. And then the most painful one is the illusion of, you know, of the, of the relationship yeah. itself. Because when you're with an abuser, when you're with a narcissist, that is not love. Yeah. That is abuse disguised as yeah. love. And so even though I felt love, I was in love with him, that love was based on an illusion, right? Uh, so that's not real love. And that was, that was so hard, so hard to, to, cause you're really, with. you have to yeah. grieve that fake version of the relationship you, do. That you created. Yeah. You do. You absolutely have to mourn yeah. it. And the biggest mistake that women make is they don't want to go through it. So they jump right into another relationship, yeah. just like I did after my first marriage. You jump right into it or you self-medicate, right? You drink or smoke or eat or whatever it is you do. Um, and yeah, just that's exactly what I did. After and those are all ways I didn't want I to, think feel to it. stay at the bottom of the mountain or stay at the beginning of the road and to yep. not have to move forward. And, um, and yeah, Carol says this seems to be like an endless road and there's so many phases and ups and downs. And I think it feels like that while you're in it. But I just, I think, I don't know if you agree with me, but like on the other side, it's so worth doing that hard work. Oh my God. Oh my God. If everybody listening, oh my God, if you, I wish I could like, you know, flash in a side view of, um, of that woman I was just, you know, seven years yeah. ago when I was a puddle on the closet floor. Yeah. Right. I mean, I had no hope. Um, and on my recovery process, the first couple of years, it was just, it was just, it, it was pain. just me, like with my yeah. eyes closed, just feeling for doors, and feet, you yeah. know, yeah. it was constant yeah. pain. It was. And I, and I, and I doubted it all the time. But what I have learned is that it's the movement forward. No matter if you, no matter, you don't have to know the direction that you're going in. You don't have to know, oh, I'm going to be here. I'm going to live here and move it. You don't need to have any details figured out. You just need to get up in the morning and you need to make a movement forward. Even if it's a snail, you know, yeah. slide, whatever. Um, just as long as it's forward and not back into the yeah. pain, right? Not back to the abuser. And women return to their abuser an average of seven yeah. times. And the reason is, is because... They start the journey and it gets way too painful. And, and I did it too. Really? I went back to my abuser once um, because it just got too painful. And I thought, I'm just going to go back because even though I was miserable, I knew what yeah. that misery looked like, right? It feels safe. Right? I don't know what the future looks totally. like. It's too scary. Totally. Yeah. I've even read 16 times as an average in one study. I, th I think it's like super typical for people to go yeah. back because it like exactly what you said, it does feel safe. Right. So I know yeah. for me, the most crucial step in shifting um, and partly this is about people being willing to talk about these experiences and like you're saying, be yeah. honest about them instead of sugarcoating them, yeah. being defensive or just ignoring it. But the most crucial step for me in, um, recovering from my own situations like this and my own, um, even my experience of sexual harassment at work was yeah. hiring an expert who I could look to yes. to be like, you're at the top right. of the mountain. There must be a path. Like, I right. think there just has to be a path because I can see you and you have done this already. Right. And so I'm really grateful to you for telling your story <clears throat> because I just think the more we talk about these experiences, the more it impacts other people to be like, oh, I don't have to believe the lies that this person is telling about me. Yes. What yes, do you think absolutely. was the biggest thing for you in recovering? Um, it was that constant, um, it was reaching out to women who were farther mm -hmm. ahead on the yeah. road than I was, right? Once I once I realized that there were other women out yeah. there ahead of me, because in the beginning, I thought I was all alone. I thought I was the only one experiencing yeah. this, you know. Um, so once I realized and started reaching out and hearing other women's stories who were already on top of the mountain, right, that's what just kept me going. Even in my pain, even in my frustration, yeah. even in my hopelessness sometimes, it was like, 
I see the light now because I see them standing over there and it's almost like I, I it's like they're, you know, you're drowning and somebody's throwing a life preserver right. to you, right? So I grabbed on to every life preserver I right. could, you know, and, um, and just held on yeah. tight. And, and I am forever grateful to the women who were ahead of me on the road who, who brought me out. So how can people get a copy of your book if they don't already have it? What's the best way to do that? Yes. Well, here on Facebook, you can either private message me and I'll send you a free copy of my book. Um, or you can go to my website at SusannaQuintana.com. How do you spell uh, Quintana? Which is also on my, <laughs> uh, which is also my Facebook yeah. page. Because <laughs> I know the whole yeah. name is like, um, yeah. So, um, and if you go to my website, you can also download a free copy. Okay. Um, nice. yeah, so you have either way, whatever, just reach out awesome. to me. Awesome. So yeah. Susanna Quintana and Q U I N T A N A. Okay. Yes. Um, and will you post yeah. that? And if you just like comments, maybe will you post the link to your website? What were you going to say? Will. I you. I'm sorry. Oh no. I was just like, since we're on Facebook now, if people just go to my profile, yeah. You know, um, they can either send me a private message or my website is on there too, but I'm going to okay. put in a comment right now. Okay, cool. And then if somebody doesn't want to wait to read the book to get help, it sounds like the best thing for them to do is send you a private message here on Facebook. Like, can they friend request you and send you? Absolutely. Because okay. I don't know if my Absolutely. people send can me... message you. Sometimes that's a little wonky for me if. Um, well, I get friend requests yeah. all the time. I mean, not friend requests. I get messages okay. all the time from people I'm not okay, friends cool. with. So, so I'm always, always on looking. alert okay, for good. that. <laughs> yeah. I've done yeah. So you can absolutely, absolutely just, you know, send me a message or you can go to my website and schedule a complimentary call with okay. me or just reach however out. you want to reach yeah. out. Or you can email me at support at SusannaQuintana.com. Yeah. And I just, yeah, and get your okay, free book. Support at SusannaQuintana.com. Okay, cool. Yes. I just, I feel yeah. like um, I see people be so reluctant to get help and feel like they should already I have know. solutions to this kind of thing. And I think we don't feel that way about almost, like, if you had to rewire the electrical wiring in your house, you wouldn't be like, I better not call right. an electrician. Right. And also, I, I tell you from my own experience, if I could go back, especially during the divorce process and, the, and the, at the beginning yeah. of my journey, oh, my God, I would have paid... I would have paid an infinity That's amount of dollars you know the to have somebody, yeah. yes, to have somebody that could have not only literally saved me tens of yeah. thousands with my attorney, but right. also could have navigated, you know, helped me navigate that road so that I could have, you know, so, you know, it's like you're going from LA to New York and all of a yeah. sudden you're like in Seattle and then you're in Texas and then you're in North Dakota and it's like, you take the longest way possible to New York. That's what I did. Right. You know, totally. So, yeah. So it, why do that? Like, I mean, yeah, I, I'm not going to rent a car. I'm going to walk two blocks <laughs> and then I'm going to take the bus for another two blocks. And then I'm going right. to come back because we don't right. know, I think. And I even think a lot of times women are kind of taught, um, one, you don't talk about problems in your relationship. You only post on Instagram all the wonderful things that everybody is doing. Yeah. And then two, yeah. that there's like a, um, a extravagance or something to getting expert help that I don't feel like men are yeah. taught. I don't feel like men are taught don't have an expert help you because it's an extravagance. And I think it's such a lie. Yeah. It's like not an extravagance to get healthy. Right five years earlier. <laughs> right. Yeah, absolutely. Just like you said, I mean, if, you know, if I have a plumbing problem, I'm not going to go into the walls yeah. myself and try it. Right? And this is that yeah. serious. Like when people are, I mean, I see people like not able to get out of bed and go to work, not able to yeah. like parent their children. And then they're like, yeah. I just need to, um, pay for the bare necessities I can't invest in getting help. And I, yes. And that happens so often with, um, when we're uh, either about to file yeah. for divorce or we're in the divorce yeah. process with a narcissist, which like I said, is hell on earth. If you thought 
being with a narcissist was bad, divorce them. That is pure hell. Really? And, but, you know, uh, for example, one of my, the women that I work with now, um, she's about to file for divorce and he's a classic narcissist. And so I am helping her, you know, think outside yeah. the box because when we're in that moment, we're, we think solely emotional yeah. and defensively. and the problem and defensively yeah. and emotionally, and we can't think logically. Mm -hmm. And also narcissists are notorious for wearing us mm -hmm. down. They know how to wear us totally. down to the point where like what happened in my divorce is I'm just, I was so emotionally beaten yeah. down and exhausted that I thought I, I'm not going to do, I don't want to fight for it. I don't want to yeah. do this. I don't. And I had all these regrets coming out of it. So, yeah. so that's what, you know, for example, I'm helping this woman now is to see, I'm just, I'm just basically acting as the voice of her higher self. She yeah. just can't, she can't function at full capacity right now because she's so emotionally involved. Right. Um, and so, so things like, um, you know, women in divorce are notorious for uh, letting, making decisions based on their emotions, whereas men in divorce look at it like yeah. a business yeah. dealing, right? So when you have those two things combined with a narcissist, it's a recipe, women are in a whole abuse. lot of trouble. Yeah, and absolutely, financial abuse in terms of the amount of money that you have to spend to to keep Absolutely. engaging. I think so too. Absolutely. I think, I mean, yeah. I see, I see women a lot of times that when, who I work with quit ahead of time in a job because they're not thinking of quitting a job as an expense. So they'll basically be investing like a hundred thousand dollars in the expense of right. not having income. And I think it seems similar when people are going through divorce, like, well, I have to pay for this lawyer and that's just yeah. an expense. So I can't afford to have help. And I think you can't afford not to because you're going to spend yeah, $50,000 instead of $5,000 on your lawyer. Yeah. Yeah. Not only that, the emotional trauma yeah. that you could save yourself. I mean, it's hard enough as it is with a narcissist, but the emotional trauma you can save yourself, especially if you have children, yeah. you know, because because you're, you're on two paths, right? You're on two parallel paths where at this, at the, on the, on the logistical side, you have to navigate divorce and attorneys and figuring who gets what and custody yeah. and stuff like that. And yet you're still on this parallel path of, I need to yeah. heal. I'm traumatized. Yeah. I'm heartbroken. I'm hurting. I don't know what's going to yeah. come tomorrow. Right. And so doing those things, two things alone, Without help, um, yeah, it just it is. It's just say, a I recipe this for as disaster. A lawyer, but most lawyers are just not equipped to help with the Ugh. second part. Like it's it's not what we're trained to do in law school. And yeah, a lot of lawyers kind of like the drama, and so they make it worse. So yes, and you know, my lawyer had no idea about mm -hmm. um, anyone with a borderline personality mm -hmm. disorder, how narcissists work. Um, he was mainly a business lawyer. I spent tens of tens of thousands of dollars yeah. um, and came away with, uh, Just I'm heartache. still like, yeah. I, I try not to regret stuff, but that is the one touchy yeah. thing with me that I'm like, uh, yeah. if only, if, if only, only I had, had you. Known. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, if only I had me. <laughs> right. So Carol says, are professional counselors trained in narcissistic abuse and how to help someone coming out of it? So not always. And you should be careful about no. that. And that's something that Su Susanna and I talked about at the beginning where she had a lot of re-traumatizing experiences and I've had some yes. experiences. And so I think you need to be cautious about investing in support where somebody is an expert at the problem that you have. Absolutely. And, um, you know, if you are in a relationship with a narcissist and you want to get counseling, um, go get counseling, but go yeah. separately. Do not go with a narcissist yeah. and, and try them out. You know, it's just, it, it is like choosing a lawyer or a doctor or anybody else. It's like, you wouldn't go to a heart doctor when you have something wrong with your throat, yeah. right? So you want to find a, a, and there's, it could be just a counselor. It could be a life coach. It could be yeah. a therapist. It could be a psychologist. It could be, you know, it, it, it could be any of those that either have a lot of knowledge yeah. about it, or it could be any of those that have 
no knowledge but about for it, right? Me, I mean, yeah, I think it's important that it be a person that resonate with you that has the skills to absolutely. solve the problem that you actually have, not just somebody yes. who your friends recommended who has a bunch of degrees who like seems really smart. Yeah, because that doesn't necessarily mean anything in this kind of situation. Yeah, especially with, you know, one of the things that victims of narcissists say over and over again is I feel so mm -hmm. alone. I feel like nobody understands yeah. what it's like, what, what I'm going through and the kind of person that I'm dealing yeah, with, right? Particular. And so that's why you need to find somebody who, you know, um, I don't care how many masters or degrees yeah. you have, you know, if you don't have the experience of, of going through, you know, a relationship and help you can do, you yeah. know, and, and the other thing I'll say about therapy is that in so many situations, talk therapy yeah. helps, right. To go in and just talk. But when you're trying to recover and heal, just talking about it without getting, you know, real yeah. help or somebody's going to say, look, just like, you know, standing on top of the mountain and going, Hey, look, you're going the wrong yeah. way. You're going to hit a, you're going to hit a cliff yeah. if you go that way. Yeah, I think it's real. That's my experience too. I also think when we've been so like many people who have experience with narcissistic abuse have um, so entrenched in our minds to be loyal to other people and not loyal to ourselves yeah. that even when you're right. trying on counselors, that can, that is something to be aware of and not be more loyal yes. to a particular counselor even than you are to yourself. Absolutely. I've had the experience of having counselors say to me, uh, like a psychologist said to me once that I only wanted to leave treatment because and I felt so much worse after every like talk therapy session yeah. with her. Right. And she said, I, right. That's the first. Yeah, clue. Right. right. And she said, I only wanted to leave because I was really starting to make breakthroughs and I wanted to keep myself stuck. And I had a really hard time staying on my own side and being like, I want to yeah. leave because you're not good at your job. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Right. But I think it is, I, I mean, talk therapy, I think has been shown to be helpful to some extent and then very, uh, not effective. Yeah. To get people, uh, like, I think it's really helpful for processing what's already happened, but it's not as helpful to get you to the goal that you want to set for your life. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that'd be like, you know, taking that trip yeah um without the road yeah. map and you got somebody standing on the other side and they're they're just you know you're like okay well now i'm in seattle and now i'm in texas and, you're just, and now they're I'm sitting in, in the passenger and the other person just you. sitting there going yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You, now you are in seattle <laughs> i can see that <laughs> yeah right i'm going to validate that you're yeah. in seattle <laughs> like, i think you a map to new york totally right <laughs> Right. Well, it was so nice talking to you. Is there anything else that you feel like people need to know? Um, I, yeah. You know, I just always end with um, just reaching out to those who are in the darkness and still um, feeling that no hope or, or even in a space where it's like, you know, maybe, maybe this is just what's meant yeah. for me or maybe this is what I deserve mm. or – you know, I'm here to tell you that I was right there where you are and you are not alone. Um, and there is a light out there and you deserve to live a life you deserve um, and that you've always dreamed yeah. of, right? There's no, there's no need for you to be in a relationship where you're suffering. There's absolutely yeah. no need. You deserve Totally. Better. And Carol, my last message would be you should talk to Susanna for sure. <laughs> She has another comment that talk therapy hasn't been the most helpful for her. So you definitely should talk to Susan. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Please reach out. Like I said, I'm easy to get a hold of, yeah. you know, send me a message or go to my website yeah. or whatever is most convenient. whatever. All right. Well, yeah. thanks so much for talking. I'm sure I'll talk to you soon. Okay. One way or thanks another. for having okay. me. Bye. All right. Okay. Bye.